Hey guys, I'm back with another Sons of the Forest building guide. In this building guide, I'm going to be giving you advanced tips and tricks that you didn't know were possible. There are so many things in this game that you can do that most people don't even know you can do. Once you learn the advanced expert building tips that I show you in this video, you'll never be able to go back to your old building ideas. You'll be able to take your building to the next level and make structures you didn't even know were possible. All right, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. Do me a favor though, hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe for more Sons of the Forest content in the future. Do you ever find yourself in this situation where you have a building where the center does not go to a perfect roof? Well, there's actually a fix for this. So you can take three fourths logs and you can put them on the front and put them on the back. And then you can go down here and grab a half log and a half log and you can come up with the half logs and then throw the half logs on top. And then after that, you can grab one fourth logs and then you can take the one fourth logs and you can put those on top. And after you do this, you'll be able to take full size logs, get up on top and you'll be able to put them down at angles like that. So then do the other side, get up on top, put one across and now you can start putting on planks on either side in order to make a normal roof. And once you put all the planks on, it will look something like that, which is going to look much better, and you won't have the weird triangle gap, at least in this particular instance. Do you ever find yourself making a roof or an overhangs or something like this, and you have all these hideous support beams, and there's nothing you can do about it? Well, there is. There's a thing in this game called struts. So all you gotta do is cut a log in half to get half logs. Then you can go over to either side, and you can stick in the struts into the corners, and this will allow you to pull out the supporting logs. And that will free up some of the space. Although, in some cases, it doesn't exactly work right. Uh, so, struts are very buggy right now in early access. So, try to do the struts before building on top of them. But, generally speaking, you'll be able to clean up your buildings and have no supports like that. And while we're on the topic of struts, there's some things you need to know about struts. So if you're ever going to build them side by side like this and remove everything, if you are going to put any cross beams like this or like this, you want to do this before you remove the supports for the struts. Because if you don't, it will not let you add them afterwards and you'll have to put them all back in. So once you remove them, then you want, and once you put these across, then you want to start removing your supporting beams. Do it in that order or you will regret it later. Let's stay on topic with the struts. So there's something else you need to know. There's a way to unnaturally extend the length of a strut. So what you'll do is you'll start with a strut on one side like this. And then what you'll do is you'll do off the end like this. And you'll keep stacking them up and doing it like this. And then every other one, you're going to remove the support. So we're going to put another one down like this. And then you're going to remove the support. And then you're going to keep repeating this process another time or two. And you'll hit a point finally where you will not be able to remove another one. So I think it's on this one that then we'll lift this up. And now when we go to lift this, it won't let us do it. But if at this point, if we did it in this order, then we put a strut on this side, this one can be lifted up, which lets us remove up to four different supports across a strut. But if you want to build something really amazing with struts, you may want to consider doing something like this. And this can go beyond two layers. You can go multiple layers with what I'm about to show you. Just make sure they're all connected on the end. So I'm actually missing a piece down here. I want to make sure that is connected as well before I do this. So once it's all connected on the ends like that, then you can go up onto one of these and you can repeat the process that I just showed you. So you can go over to here, you can add a strut, and then go get more pieces and build this out. When it's time to remove a piece, you either do a quick jump like a trick jump like that, or you can do it from the other side if you have more than one layer and then keep on building until you hit the other side and the problem that I showed you before. So now the strut is complete. We're gonna go ahead and put in the final piece right here and that will allow us to remove this. Now you might be wondering, why in the hell did we just do this on top of this? Well, let me do this other one first and I'll show you why. Let's do both of them. It's always better to do top down. So let's build both struts and then I'll show you. Okay, so I'm gonna finish off this one. And now that we've done these, I can remove this. And here's the reason we did this. As long as they're connected on the ends, we can now remove every single log underneath of these, which will give us a platform up in the sky we can build on, or we could do this to make an overhang for a roof that doesn't have tons of support beams. Uh, you can use your imagination to make whatever you want with this. And now we have something like this. And this could go in many rows. We could do like 50 of these in a row if we wanted to. And so you can also go up and build a platform up on this, and you could build your entire base 
up here in the sky. And when you're done, you can go ahead and remove these. Maybe you'll make a rope to get up there whenever you want to get up there, but you can remove all this stuff in the side. This does not need to be here. I'm removing this to show the point that this is a freestanding structure that does not need this side support thing. So there we go. Completely disconnected from it. And you can still have that look like that. You can build a house in the sky, giant platform, whatever you want. Overhang roofs. Extremely vital building tip. For some of you, this next building tip is going to be a lifesaver. So if you ever had the issue, you're trying to cut a log, and this one seems to be working good, but sometimes you go up to these and you can't seem to get the thing to appear. Well, one of the easiest ways to make it appear is always approach it from an angle like this. And if you get it like this, you can just look across it like this, and they almost always will appear for you like this. And that is like the most consistent way to get a cut wherever you want to get it. Some reason going up from the front doesn't always want to work, and you have to like search for it. But this way is much more consistent at finding the lines. This next building tip is really interesting. So say you have a structure like this and you want to build something really abnormal. Well, the game will not let you do that. It'll put, make the cursor turn red when you're looking at the ground. But what you can do is get kind of far away until it lets you build. And then it'll let you freeform place one at an angle. And so then you'll place one at an angle wherever you're trying to go, say right there, for example. And then, let me find a free log here. All right, then you can go ahead and lift this up. And now, suddenly, you have a new base to build off of right inside of your pre-existing structure. So you can do that to make some very jank, interesting stuff. Or with some serious skill, you could make some extra, extremely advanced structures. Another important tip with this tip that I just gave you is that you can do a similar thing to readjust a grid. So right now, this grid is set up in 90 degree angles from here. I can build out from here. I can build 90 from there, 90 from there, etc. Now, if I want to change that grid, I can do that by placing one, say, right here off the grid. And then I can try to place one at an angle to where it'll connect to that. And sometimes the game will just throw it down like that. If it doesn't, just pick it back up and keep trying until it does that. Now that it's done that, I now can build off of this angle like this. And that will allow me a new like way to connect to a pre-existing grid i basically can fuse two grids in order to make structures that have different angles attached to them and now this next tip is built upon the previous two tips so what we can do with the previous tips where we realigned the grid is we can continue to realign the grid so i actually don't want these like this i want to put one off center from this one now and then we'll try to get it to connect and there we go and now we'll grab more logs and we'll try to get another one off center. So like right here, for example, and then we can go ahead and try to get another one on the grid. And we can do this in order to get an interesting structure where it's wider than it was previously, but it's also like curved around and we can have an entrance where we walk in something like that. Next up, I have some ideas for you, some tips for you about different ways you can build roofs with different heights. So you're not limited to the standard height. So you don't have to build a roof that goes from one grid up, from one grid to one grid up. You don't have to do it at these angles. You can do all sorts of creative angles if you use different sized pieces. So you could, for example, you could have a fourth in the front over here and there. And then you could have, say, a half in the back and have an elevated roof. A uh, very light angled roof that's elevated or you could have a fourth that goes into a three-fourths and have an angle like that or you could have a fourth and a full size or a half and a full size or whatever angles that you want to make basically you can put uh, logs on top of logs on top of logs you could put a half on top of a fourth and then that will let you run a strut across at a weird angle uh, it lets you do all sorts of weird things so you can play with these and try to get weird things to happen. So for this next tip, let me build upon what I just said. Say we want to have a balcony here in the middle and roofs on the side. What would we do? Well, one of the things that we could do is remove all this stuff and then we can put down these middle ones as multiple pieces instead of putting them down all at once. So what I mean by that is say we want to have a guardrail around our balcony. Well, then what we can do is we can put down half logs right here instead of the three-fourths logs and then we could also put half logs on the front right here and right here then we can grab full-size logs and we can wrap them around the uh, front and the sides 
like that, and like that. And then we can grab one-fourth logs, and we can stack those up on top of these ones now. So we can put that down, we can put that down, and then we can rebuild the top. But when doing things like this, you've got to think ahead, because now we can't build the angled roofs because there is no angle, and there's no way to put it down. So let me tear all this middle stuff back up and show you the way that you can do this. So I've reset it back to just these half logs. So I'm gonna stick fourth logs on top of them, or I could just use three fourth logs in this case. And now we're gonna grab full size logs. We're gonna come up here and we're going to put down full size logs at the correct angle. Then what we're gonna wanna do is find a plank. And now what we're gonna do is put one plank down to tamp that down so it can't lift back up. And then we're gonna grab half logs and we're going to put the half logs right here and right there now after that we can pull off the plank we don't need it anymore and now we can start grabbing full-size logs and we can start putting full-size logs like that we also want one across there grab more full-size logs and we'll be able to put them on the sides like this in order to bring this up now as of right now this is the best solution we have to this exact balcony problem but building techniques like this of using multi-layered stuff, setting things down, and then building layers on top of them and through them. Doing stuff like that is absolutely critical if you want to build extremely advanced structures in Sons of the Forest. So I'll put this one down over here, and now we have this, but we'll also be able to still build the roofing on the side right next to it. So this allows us to have roofs on the side with a balcony in the middle. If you don't like this look, then you could just remove these and not have them, but this is how you can have a square look. And if you want to fill that in, you could. So let's build on the previous tip yet again. So we have the previous roof, which was something like this with a balcony. And now we build this other one that's slightly higher. So let's talk about different angles of roofs. So right now we have a zero going to a three fourths. If we want to continue on with this exact angle, since we're currently at three fourths, we're going to need a full size to go up to a half size or if we want we can shorten the angle to a half size roof by putting one fourths on here or if we put three fourths on here we'll have a slightly deeper roof or steeper roof and if we put full sizes on here that'll be the max we can go which is actually one and one fourths angle which will be an extremely steep roof and to keep building on the same train of thought i'm going to show you something you can do for a special kind of roof so what you can do is we can go over here and we can smack down half logs right over here and right over here. And we can grab two more half logs, like that one and that one. And then we can go up here and tap these ones down over here and over here. Then on this side, we need to do the angle of roof like we talked about. What angle do we want? So right now we're actually at an inverted angle. It would go downhill, which we don't want in this particular case. So a fourth would bring it to half. We put a half on, it'll be a very shallow roof. Um, if we put three fourths on, it'll be a somewhat steeper and then a full size will be even steeper, and then we'd have to add more on top of that if we wanted more. Let's try doing three-fourths and see what that looks like. And all of this is just so I can show you another roofing technique that ends up looking really cool in some cases. So I've put them on, and I'm just gonna put this last one on. Now what we need to do is connect everything with full-size logs. So now we're gonna have something that looks like this. Also, I may wanna remove that since that was supposed to be a balcony. Okay, so what we can do now is we can, if we have, as long as we had a log set right here, we can set logs down right here and right there, like so. We can grab more logs and set them down like that. And we also want to set up the actual roof a little bit so I can see how high these logs need to go. So we can do it like that. We'll need one more log to close the gap then. And then we can have this really interesting look. So now we're gonna have something that looks like this. We could have done a steeper angle like I talked about, and we'll also want to finish off the stuff right there. We'll put one across right there. And then we have this really interesting roof incline that looks like that. So you can do things like that to get creative and break up your roofs and change the style of them. And also if you need a certain type of height in the interior, you can also do things like this in order to make that happen. Another tip that I have is from my advanced water building guide. If you didn't see that one, what you can do to build inside of very deep water like this is you can build structures like this lean-to, for example, or if it's too deep, you could try building the lookout tower, but let's go ahead and click that. And then what that will do is let us put resources down 
onto something we normally would not be able to reach. So I put it too deep, but the idea is that you put it just out of range and then you can add resources to it. So for example, if I built it close enough, I could have actually added resources to it to make it like this. And then what you can do is you can jump out on top of this and you can build on top of this. So you'll have to do some of the techniques I just showed you, like putting half logs down, leveling this out, creating a level platform, or you could just use this as a bridge to your next object, which would be say a lookout tower. So we could try building a lookout tower here, although wow, this water is very deep for, for a lake, but uh, you could put a lookout tower nearby or whatever else, depending on the depth of the water, try building out in there and then building these structures up to build over very deep water. Now, some people say just build when it freezes, but the question I have in response to that is what about ocean water? Ocean water does not freeze, which means you'll have to use techniques like this if you want to build in deep ocean water. So now we're going to look at a really advanced building tip. It allowed me to make one of the structures you saw at the beginning of the video. So you're going to make a strut like this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to build off of it again. But this time, what we're going to do is we're going to lift this up and we're going to leave this one. Now what we're going to do is make it so we can get up there grab two more logs and then get up here and do that and then do that and now you'll have something like that so now what we can do is grab a half log and go up here and make another strut and now we have a strut and a strut now we can just remove this and this lets us build out from center without having supports now be very careful doing this in early access because I'm pretty sure this is not intended and it can be very, very, very glitchy, which you can see at the base of my tree house in the distance. Uh, it made a bunch of things at the base that couldn't be removed. So when you're building like this, remove the supports as you go. Every time you do a layer, remove all the supports or else you can end up with some very buggy ones. Uh, building pieces can shift around when certain things get removed if you do it wrong. Very, very iffy way to build but expert builders can make it happen well that about wraps it up for this building guy i know i've dragged this out to almost 20 minutes now so i better stop here but if you want to know more building tips definitely hit that subscribe button and if this video helped you in any way shape or form please hit the like button helps me out a lot uh, but now you know all sorts of good building tips also if this video did help you check out the description of this video for other helpful sons of the forest videos i have other building guides advanced building guides how to build on deep ocean water how to make a deep ocean village how to make a zip line fast travel system get across the map in nine minutes corner to corner all sorts of crazy stuff in there also if you want to support me just check out art gallery simulator it's a game that i'm making on steam there's a link for that in the description of this video just go there and wishlist it that would help me out a lot but either way guys hit that like button subscribe and i hope that you learned something today this has been another advanced building guide for sons of the forest.